I was a freelance writer, as I have always been, uh, since my brief career in um, science. And I was pitching um, an article uh, to the editor of a major national magazine, which will go unmentioned in the interest of my further career. And one of the, the, the big perks, the only perk, perhaps, of being a freelance writer is they take you out for lunch, you know, because they got to eat anyway, and if they put it on the expense account, all the better. So I'd been taken out to a one a very fancy restaurant. You learn to bring a little plastic baggie with you uh, after a while. And I was pitching my uh, piece on uh, something to do with women in poverty. I thought it through. I thought I had a good angle. And he looked clearly bored, you know, as we went through course after course. And we finally get to the death by chocolate dessert. And he rolled his eyes and said, okay, Barbara, do your thing on poverty, but make it upscale. <laughs> what did that mean? You know, uh, that was uh, his instruction. And you constantly encounter that kind of opposition. I have, it's strange to say, but have had much more, found it much easier to pitch stories um, in the mainstream media that have to do with gender, even if I'm going to be fairly outrageous about it, or gay rights or something like that, than anything to do with class. And there are a couple of reasons um, for the resistance, which I'll mention. One um, has to do with the fact that um, magazines and newspapers depend on advertising for the revenue, right? Advertisers like to think they're reaching wealthy people, affluent people. Somehow in the editor's mind, this gets translated into the sort of dictum that you shouldn't have bummer-type stories about poor people. They would not look good across from that ad for Tiffany's or whatever. So there's this kind of automatic idea that everything should be pitched to the wealthy and that the wealthy will not be interested uh, in anything to do um, with poverty. So that's a structural sort of thing. There's also, uh, I think, um, uh, certain kinds of uh, class and, unfortunately, also racial prejudices that I've encountered among editors uh, personally. Uh, for the racial prejudice, I would mention a um, suggesting to an editor um, a certain writer who would be excellent for the story he wanted, which happened to be about having men who have a second family when they're about 50. And uh, the man I proposed, the writer I proposed, was an African-American, so the editor said, oh, I don't think he'd resonate with our audience. If you're African-American, you're supposed to write about those issues alone. If you're a woman, you're not supposed to write about foreign policy or science and technology, you're supposed to write about, you know, soft domestic issues or something like that. Um, so anyway, there are prejudices. Uh, one, another exa an example of class prejudice, this goes into the period in the late 80s when everybody, women were all supposed to be worried about the man shortage. You probably, you're too young to know about the man shortage, but we were told for a certain point of time that it was very hard to find a husband because there was this big shortage of men. Um, now, you know, you look at the Senate or something, and I think there is a man excess, as there has always been. But anyway, I was proposing to write uh, a uh, little essay on how there really were plenty of men if you didn't look for a man who was older, taller, and richer than yourself. 